proudly we hail... City where the American stage begins, here's another program of the cast of Outstanding Players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your army to bring you this story. As proudly we hail the United States Army. presentation is titled, A Luncheon Date at Clarence, and it's a story that seems to ask a question. How do you know how important you may be to someone else, even to a stranger you've never met before? Our first act curtain will rise in just one moment, but first, young men, let's talk about your future, and America's future. They're important to each other, you know, and to you. Today, your United States Army is charged with a vital responsibility, and to meet this responsibility... The Army is rapidly expanding its forces. They have a job for you. A job that must be done by men of courage. You can get full details of how you may best serve your future and your country's future by a visit to your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Remember, gentlemen, team up with the Army and you team up with success. It's amazing how your actions can sometimes indirectly affect someone else. I'm, I'm sure what happened later wasn't an accident, although it might have been. Who, who knows whether these things are planned or whether they just happen. Uh, that could get us into a great big discussion, and when it would be over, we'd know no more about it than we did at the beginning. Well, getting back to the story that I want to tell you, a routine army transfer sent me back to Germany. Me and my wife, that is. I'm first sergeant of a rifle company, and Marcia is the lab technician in the medics, and she was able to transfer with me. We both liked our new assignments, and before we knew it, time had passed, and we both put in for furloughs. We thought we'd spend a couple of weeks driving around Europe. Now, as we drove south through France, I happened to realize how familiar the countryside was. Well, it's 1230. Where should we stop for lunch? Well, there's a fairly big-sized town right along about here, a place called Clarence. I don't see any signs of a town there. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sure of it. My outfit came up through this way back in 44. I, I remember this stretch pretty well. Oh, wait, wait a minute. There's a road sign. What, what does it say? Oh, Clarence. Eight kilometers. That's right. About eight kilometers. Say about, about five miles. You know, right around here is where I met your brother. I don't think I'll ever forget that night. <laughs> I don't think you should either. Don't worry, I won't. I've heard about it enough. Yeah, well, just, just think. Just think. Both of us were lost. We were in different outfits. We didn't know each other. If I hadn't met him that night, we wouldn't have looked each other up after the war, and I never would have met you. Why don't we send Jim a postcard from Quran? Yeah, sure. Say, I wonder whatever happened to the druggist and the doctor, those two Frenchmen in Clarence. I always meant to go back there one day and look them up, but you know how it is. Would they still be around? Well, why not? They couldn't have been more than 40 or so at the time. Two nicer guys you wouldn't want to meet anywhere. Say, when we get to town, why don't we ask them to have lunch with us? wonder if they'll remember me. It's funny, I don't, I don't even know their last names. I, I, I think one was called Etienne and the other Henri, but I can't be sure. Well, how can we look them up if you don't even know their names? Well, I remember the house in the street where the druggists lived. We shouldn't have any trouble. I was only there once in my life, and it was a dark night, but I'll bet you I can pick it right out. Say, it's a shame your brother can't be with us. What are we stopping for? Well, let's get out of here for a minute. Yeah. You, you see that farmhouse? That's where Jim and I met. My rifle company was attacking. Jim was part of a machine gun section from the heavy weapons company supporting it. The Germans sure had an ambush set up for it. Why did you tell me about it after you know, lunch? We, we, we didn't know it at the time, but, but here was where they were ready to counterattack. Our one company walked into a whole regiment of them. You wouldn't know it to look at it now, but... Right here, this is the field that we were moving across. Uh, Captain Henley, he, he was our company commander. I was just his runner. There, there was a big shell hole right about here. No, 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 closer to the road. 
Well, anyway, he and I... Yes, sir. Connor's just come back from the point. There must be a whole Jerry Reserve regiment coming at us. We'll have to fall back to the battalion and clear on. You know where that machine gun section leader from H Company is? Well, he should be about 50 yards behind us to the left. Yeah, we'll see if we can get to him. Tell him we have to pull back and tell him to give us all the covering fire he can. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, Sergeant. Get down, you fool. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for you. Oh, jump in here, will you? Uh, you're, uh, you're Sergeant Hastings from H Company. Yeah. I'm Bill Fields, Captain Henley's runner. The captain's going to try to pull the company back. Can you give us some covering fire? Yeah, we've already figured that out. Hey, Miller, get over to the other gun. Tell him to drop back with the rifleman. There's some good cover back in the rear. Have him set up there and cover us when we pull out. Hey, Fields, that's your name? We're only machine gunners, not miracle workers. You want this baby to operate, we need a little protection. Oh, don't worry about it. You've got a BAR team on your right and riflemen on your left. Don't worry about it, he says. Hey, Jack, I don't see any more than 500 rounds of ammo here. Go back where we dropped those other boxes. Yeah. Hey, Frank, you might as well lend him a hand. I'll take over the gun. Sergeant, you ought not stay here alone. Oh, do as I tell you. Now, if you get pinned down and can't make it back, bring the ammo to the other gun. Now, get out of here. Now, Fields, what are you waiting around for? Me? Nothing. I better find the captain. Hey, hold it, buddy. Here they come. <laughs> Uh, let me get around the other side and feed you the ammo. I'm not stopping you. Did you ever see so many Jerry's? Look, look, look. They're dropping back and looking for cover. That's good. Every minute we hold them counts. I don't hear that BAR team. And I don't see those riflemen either. I got a strange feeling there's no one here but us. Uh oh. What? They're firing. In back of us. Buddy, we've been outflanked. What are we going to do? Fields, they just bypassed us. And when you hear them in the rear, there's just one thing to do. Get out. Can't see a thing. This must be the darkest night of the year. Buddy, if it wasn't, we'd have never got this far. Why don't we hear any more firing? I don't know. What worries me is what happened to the Jerry's. That's the town right up ahead, Clarence. Hey, did our outfit pull out? Are the Jerry's in there now? Well, there's only one way to find out. Well, let's go. Easy now, no noise. Let's get around back of those houses. Ah, what, what, oh. what happened? I fell right into it. Somebody's old fox. Oh. What, what, what's the matter? My leg. Well, what's the matter with it? Yeah, yeah, it's my ankle. I sprained it real well, bad. Let me give you a hand up. Here, here, boy. That ankle's never been any good since I broke it playing football. Oh, oh no, no, no. It's no good. Can't walk. Okay, just take it easy. Take it easy, boy. You're doing fine. Look, if we should run into any Jerry's, no point in you trying to be a hero. Just drop me like a hot rock and run for it. We'll figure that one out when we come to it. Now, hold, hold, hold still. Can't see a thing. The shade's pulled down. Take out your bayonet. Pry up that window a little bit. Very slow. Now, just push the shade a little bit. Not so much. Good. See anything? It's the back of a shop of some kind. Drugstore. There's a guy mixing up prescription. He alone? Looks that way. He's a Fabian Frenchman. Oh, we have to take a chance. Call him over. Psst. What is that? What are you doing? Americans. Are there any Germans here? Wait, uh, I must turn out the lamp. Bosch, they are in this town. They have it again. What do you do here? You must go quickly. Where is the American army? They have gone back across the river. You cannot stay here. What is the matter with your friend? Uh, my ankle. I can't walk. Bad, bad. Something must be done. You cannot remain outside. Uh, you and I will help him through the window. 
Then you, the sound one, climb in after, huh? Yeah, okay. Right, come, give me a hand there. Yeah, right, right. Ah, come on, a little more oh, now. Oh, right, oh, just oh, one now. Oh, 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 now, follow me. Yeah. We will go down this cellar. Yeah. Now, we are safe for now. But hold the lamp. I am an apothecary. I will look at his ankle. Hmm. I fear it is broken. Well, look, mister. The Germans are in town. We can't stay here. Yeah, it is obvious. I should hesitate to think what would happen to me if you are discovered in my cellar. However, we need not waste time in uh, unpleasant thoughts. There is a way uh, to get you back to your lines. With this ankle? First, I will get the doctor. That ankle must be handled properly. It is no task uh, for an amateur. You say you know a way to get us back? How? Oh, you'll see. Now, wait here. I shall return presently. Oh, there is a, a bottle of wine on that shelf. What do you think? I don't know. I guess we're stuck. Of course, he could come back here with a squad of Germans. I thought of that, too. He doesn't look like the type. Who knows? These people have lived through four years of war in their own backyard. They've been through a lot. Sometimes a guy figures he has to survive best way he can. Well, this is the end of the line. All we can do is wait. Well, anyhow, wine's pretty good. Here, try some. are you doing at my house? Close both your mouth and the door quickly. Etienne, I have sworn you would never set foot in my house. Just as I have sworn you would never enter mine, my opinion of you remains the same. And no matter what I may think of you, at least I give you credit for being a Frenchman. Very well, then. A truce. Is there a job to be done? The Germans are as thick as thieves right now in the town. What is called for? Your medical skill. I have two American soldiers in the cellar of my house. Well, we must get them out of there at exactly, once. Exactly, Henri, and we have every chance of success. I'm afraid uh, one has suffered a broken ankle. I will set it at once. Let me fetch a few things. I should remind you that the German officer said any civilian found walking in the street after dark uh, will be shot. If you have the nerve to walk to my house, I will find the nerve to walk to yours. We had better try the back way. Less chance of encountering any of them. Very well. I'm ready. After you, Doctor. Finished. You understand I could perform far more creditably under hospital conditions. Oh, this is all right. This is fine. As a doctor, I should prescribe absolute rest, but I realize this is an unusual situation. When you walk, lean heavily on your comrade. You, uh, you said we could get out of here. You still haven't told us how. Our town of Clarence has always been a secret headquarters of the resistance. We have much experience in hiding fugitives. Etienne has a tunnel underneath the cellar. It leads straight to the river. You will come out at a cave near a narrow part of the stream, where it is shallow. You have an excellent chance of getting across. And then you will be with your own troops. Sounds good. We must leave now while it is still dark. Uh, I will go with you. Good luck. I know we'll make it. I don't know how we can ever thank both of you. Thank us. For what? We are only doing our duty. But come, we have no time. That's all there was to it, Marcia. Yes, dear, I know. I took you to the river, you waded across, and there you were back with your outfit. Now can we have lunch? You know, I always meant to come back here, and this is the first time I had the chance. Wait till we tell this to Jim. When we get to town, I'll show you the river, and I'll bet they still have the tunnel. Can we please get back in the car and get to a place where they serve food? Yeah, all right, all right, all right. But remember, first we pick up that druggist and that doctor. Man, what a reunion we're going to have.
Yeah, this is the shop, all right. I told you that I could find it first shot. Come on, I can hardly wait to see this guy again. We oui, miss you. Uh, uh, we're we're looking for the druggist. I guess you'd call him the apothecary. Oh, well, whatever you choose to call him, Monsieur, I am he. Oh, do you do you run this place? We. Oui. Well, isn't there another man working here? No. No, I am quite alone. Well, maybe you made a mistake, Bill. It must be another drugstore. Another apotheek, madame? Oh, no. No, no, there is no other in Clermont. Well, what, what happened to the man who used to run it during the war? I think his name is Etienne. Oh, Etienne. Yeah, I, I, I hope he's still alive. Oui, I fear he is still alive. You fear he's alive? Where is he? He uh, is uh, in prison. In prison? Why? What for? Murder. He killed a man. Oh, I'm sorry. When when was this? He was during the war. He he killed a doctor. A doctor? We. Oui. He was denied the Germans uh, uh, recapture the town. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Was this doctor's first name Henri? Of course. But how do you know? Wait. Oui. You are a soldier. An American. How, how do you know this doctor? I was here. You were here. But of course, you were here. Oh, Lord, have mercy on us. Then Etienne was telling the truth. Say, tell me, gals... Are you kind of tired of the same old office routine? Hmm? Well, I just bet you are. Well, you know what? Now you can get away from it all. Join the Women's Army Corps. Visit exciting places in your country and abroad. Make new friends among young men and women all over the world. And you'll have plenty of leisure time to enjoy your travels, too. You see, you get a 30-day paid vacation each and every year. Plus many, many weekend passes. And, of course, there are always the holidays. So why don't you join the Women's Army Corps? I'll tell you what you do. You go down to your local United States Army recruiting station and talk it over with the real friendly folks down there. Remember, gals, you'll enjoy life more in the Women's Army Corps. And now the second act of the proudly we held production, a luncheon date at Clarence. Up to step this way. His Excellency the Mayor will see you now. Come on, Marcia. Please be seated. Hey, Sergeant, need I tell you what commotion your presence has caused in our quiet little town? Well, it's a mystery to me. All I know is I stopped in at the drugstore to look up a man who had done me a good turn during the war. All of a sudden, this guy I was talking to ran out of the store yelling in French, and a crowd gathered around us and brought us here. I'm, 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 I'm sorry about lunch, Marcia. Oh, don't mind me. We may as well see this thing through. You see, you and another soldier were in Clarence the night the Germans counterattacked? Yes, that was November 1st, 1944. I won't forget that night in a hurry. That was the night the King Giradou murdered Dr. Henri Lavelle, or at any rate, was convicted of murdering him. You're serving life imprisonment. Madame Fernet is here. Have her come in. Oui. Madame. Oui. Be seated, Madame Fernet. Uh, what is this about, Monsieur Le Maire? I am a very busy woman. It was your testimony, Madame Fernet, which created the case that sent Etienne Giraudot to prison. You remember the night of November 1st, 1944, do you not? Perfectly. Will you tell us what you saw? For what reason? You may find my statement in the record of the trial. Nevertheless, would you please repeat it now? Eh bien, it is quickly done. I happened to be looking out of my window. My house was across the street from that of Dr. Henri Lavelle. I saw the druggist, Etienne Girardou, walking furtively down the street. He entered the doctor's house. The following morning, the doctor was discovered dead in his room. He had been shot. May I leave you now? And so, you determined Etienne had shot Henri? I had determined nothing. I only testified concerning what I saw. 
I did see Etienne enter the house. The jury determined that Etienne was a murderer. Uh, you were not mayor then. You yourself served as prosecutor. But it was your testimony that sent an innocent man to prison. Uh, you will not get out of it so easily, Monsieur le Maire. I know who this soldier is. The news of his presence here has spread like fire through the town. Until today, everyone believed in Etienne's guilt. I told the truth. Etienne himself admitted he visited Henri. Is it my fault everyone in the town allowed his imagination to run riot? All of us are guilty if Etienne has been wrong. Yes, madame, perhaps. But now we must see that justice is done. Sergeant, will you help? Mr. Mayor, I wish you'd tell me exactly what happened. I only did what I thought was my duty. If there had been some way of knowing who you were, how to reach you... You see, everyone in this town knew and loved Dr. Green. And after the Germans were finally driven out, we held a trial. Yeah, but why should Etienne want to murder Henri? Oh, you did not know them. How they hated each other. How could you? After the Germans were defeated, our town was in an uproar. Everyone demanded justice. I will not forget that day. Etienne took the stand in his own defense. I had the perfect case against him. I made my reputation that day. How was I to know I was sending an innocent man? Let there be order. Continue, Monsieur le Prosecutor. Madame Renée testifies. You entered on his room. I have not denied it. And for what purpose did you enter his house? Two American soldiers were hiding in my cellar. One of them needed a doctor. Indeed, convenient lies the Americans. Two of them were in your house. Very well. Now tell me... Let us end this part. There's only one way Henri could have been killed. It was on his return home. He may have been seen at a distance by a German patrol. They may have fired on him. Badly wounded, he probably managed to get back into the house. I tell you, it was the only way it could have happened. He was probably discovered by the Germans. He ran from them. Why should he have run? He knew he would be killed. Why not surrender to them and explain? After all, he was a doctor. Because he could not explain where he had been. Everyone knows the Germans were extremely nervous that night. They said they would shoot at any civilian found in the streets after midnight. A good story, but not good enough. Simply because true stories are always the best ones. And what is the truth? You and Henri hated each other since you were boys. Everyone in this courtroom knows of your bitter rivalry. You are always jealous of his superior knowledge. It rankled you that he should have the brains to become a doctor, while you could only aspire to be a man who filled his prescriptions. He married the girl you were in love with. When she died in an automobile accident, you declared it was his carelessness that killed her. For years you have been swearing to have your revenge. And he took this way, this unfortunate war that has devastated our country, to give you your opportunity. You sneak into his house, you shot him, and you have created a fairy tale, which you cannot prove, of two mysterious Americans who appeared out of nowhere, and you want us to believe that he was killed by a German patrol as he was returning from helping two of our allies. The prosecution rests. Oh, he was found guilty, of course. But it was clear to us at the time. And we were so convinced, all of us. You know, isn't there, isn't there anything we can do? Yes, madame. Obviously, the American soldiers did exist, and here is one of them. And therefore, Etienne did go to Henri's house to secure Henri's help, and not to shoot him. Sergeant, would you be good enough to write out a statement of what happened that night? Oh, just, just give me a pen and some paper. It will take you some time. Perhaps you'd better have your lunch first. Lunch? A man's been in jail for ten years. Lunch can wait. <laughs> Yeah. 
What do you want? You have a visitor. Who would come to visit me? Why don't you go and find out? Mm, a visitor. Why, is, is there something new? Hello, Etienne. Remember me? Who are you? No. No, it cannot be. It is. You remember the other soldier, the one with the broken ankle? Well, she, she's his sister. It's my oh. wife. Wait. Wait. Now you can prove I told the truth. We've already done it. They even wrote out a pardon for you. I asked if I could be the one to deliver it. Does it mean that I am free? That's right, Etienne. Oh, let me sit down. I must sit down. You saved my life. Well, you saved mine. Oh, boy. I hated him. But you know, that night, neither of us said a word. We both of us felt a new respect for each other. I, I think we, we would have become good friends. Just think how these things work out, Bill. The first time you came to Koran, Etienne saved you. Second time you came to Koran, you saved him. Yeah, just think. Suppose the army had never transferred me to Europe again. Impossible. It was fated to be. Well, it was a pleasant return, as you can probably imagine. And Marcia and I still talk about it. It all started out because we both had a furlough and wanted to drive around Europe. And we just happened to pass by a town where I remember just one incident that took place long ago during the war. But it worked out to be the turning point in another man's life. How do you figure these things? The success of a drama, either radio, television, or stage, depends primarily on two things. First and foremost, the play is the thing. Second, fine actors to deliver the lines. And in whatever your occupation... Training and teamwork are the reasons for success. If you're a young man of service age, you can be trained for success in the course of your choice by enrolling now in your United States Army's new Reserve for You training program. For complete information, you visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Remember, fellas, team up with the Army and you team up with success. has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army, and this is Richard Hayes speaking, inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs> <laughs>